Hi, I'm Colonel Nathan Diller, Director of AFWorks. It's a privilege to get a chance to talk about some of the things that we have been doing here in AFWorks and then more particularly with Agility Prime. We launched AFWorks in 2018 through the Department of the Air Force looking specifically at an opportunity to open our doors to companies and to airmen and guardian ideas that maybe we weren't necessarily capturing under our traditional processes. We evolved over a couple of years, really trying to shift the culture of the Air Force in that period, thinking of ways that we really create those open doors and that we bring in those ideas. Then in 2020, we relaunched AFWorks. Uh, and when we relaunched AFWorks, we combined AFWorks with a couple of other organizations, uh, several organizations, really to go beyond that cultural shift and now really start to bring in new capabilities. And so in 2020, AFWorks 1.0 uh, continued uh, into an AFWorks 2.0, bringing in Agility Prime, AF Ventures, the Spaceworks, as well as our Small Business Innovation Research and our small business technology transfer programs for the Department of the Air Force. So altogether, uh, we brought those five innovation organizations together with about a billion dollars a year, looking at ways that we can accelerate emerging technologies for our Department of the Air Force. And Agility Prime was really one of the key areas in that development, looking at where under AF Ventures we identify those technologies, then looking in Spark the ways that our airmen and our guardians can use those technologies in novel new approaches. And then with Prime, uh, out of Agility Prime, and now uh, we've got a second Orbital Prime looking to launch several other potential Primes here in the coming months. This idea of, of Prime is being able to curate a problem that has interest potentially for the commercial sector as well as for the Department of Defense. And that was really when we saw this emerging electric vertical takeoff and landing market, uh, we started in 2019 identifying companies that were in that space and identifying different use cases for that with the idea, again, a broader thesis for AFWorks that over 80% of research and development is happening in the commercial sector. And if we want to be successful going forward in our Department of the Air Force, we need to make sure that we are accessing that phenomenal talent and that a really impressive capital that's out there and available. We focus very much domestically initially and now really looking to make some strides with our international partners, uh, both from a funding perspective, from a talent perspective, from a technology perspective, where we're both looking at those partner countries as a source of those technology pieces necessary, building out a more resilient supply chain, uh, looking at opportunities for capital, uh, but really, this is an exchange where we have great American companies that might produce additional capacity for our partners. And we've actually seen instances of AFWorks companies in direct support of operations in Ukraine, for example. Uh, but also looking in, in reverse, uh, phenomenal companies in this ecosystem where the Department of the Air Force could certainly find value uh, and, and continue to build out our capabilities with that partner technology. So the international piece is a, is a growing and extremely important part as we start to look at these use cases with uh, the prime programs, bringing in these companies through AF Ventures, and then now the exciting part is the hardware is becoming available, the software is becoming available, getting it back out to our airmen and to our guardians to really solve those problems, uh, creating greater agility for all of our operators that are out there and uh, we believe creating significant savings for the taxpayer in this new partnership pr approach that we've taken. So as we dig in to Agility Prime in particular, again, we've used our App Ventures approach, one is a way of bringing an open door to new companies, but also it's been an important piece for tech scouting. And so from that perspective, we have been able to very quickly bring companies on through the App Ventures program and we think it's important to keep pace in, in a way that is relevant to startup companies. Uh, in that perspective, we've had many companies that start uh, with a $50,000 contract and within a year, we have issued over $40 million contracts. And so that, that pace we think is critically important 
And, and this approach to an open door with AF Ventures has also been important to identify technologies. And when we look at the electric vertical takeoff and landing sector, what we see is certainly you know, a, a new approach to mobility, but we also see these supporting technologies where we believe the Department of Air Force absolutely cannot afford to lose. Those technologies include things like certainly autonomy, uh, the ability to not necessarily have to wear you know, wings that I've got on my chest here and the, the $2 million of investment that it takes to make a pilot, uh, but being able to, in the near term, use simplified vehicle operations to reduce that barrier to entry for pilots, as well as uh, already having many companies that are operating these aircraft in an autonomous approach. And that provides just phenomenal flexibility for our operators and the, the associated technologies with that autonomy, uh, the sensors technology, the uh, compute, the communications necessary to make that autonomy work, uh, and the algorithms, frankly. Uh, so autonomy is, is one of the key pieces. Another one, really electrification. If we look to the future, and you know, certainly electrification brings all kinds of benefits you know, that are very widely known. I think there may be some areas where, for, from an engineering perspective, uh, folks have not quite realized how this really radically shapes the way we engineer aircraft. If you look around, you know, we really focus very much uh, on the engine. You almost, in some instances, in the F-16 I flew, literally built the aircraft around the engine. With electric vertical takeoff and landing, you've got degrees of freedom in engineering design, in resiliency, in safety, in acoustics, in maintenance operations that you would not have otherwise. And so electrification for us, it just creates phenomenal opportunities going forward in those designs, creating novel new aircraft into the future. The, the last for us then is the manufacturing. And frankly, this might be the most interesting thing uh, is, is the novel approaches to manufacturing, creating low cost aircraft through an entirely different mindset. And this is, uh, frankly, it's been a challenge, I think, for our engineers. It's certainly been a challenge even for us internal to the Air Force as we've looked at uh, very low cost uh, aircraft manufacturing. And these companies, uh, you'll see really leading the edge. And so together, those three technologies have been critical for us and they've all kind of been embodied in Agility Prime. When we look at the approach that we've taken with Agility Prime, it's really taken our acquisition model and pretty radically shifted this approach to what is typically a requirements-driven acquisition. And I don't want to, uh, you know, by any stretch say that we're not interested, uh, right? This isn't a, a requirements-driven approach, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more subtle way of getting there uh, because, from the origins of AFWorks, where we really talked about shifting that culture. That cultural shift for us, to some degree, starts with a little bit of humility and the recognition that we, at the pace technology is moving, we may not know the requirements, you know, what's in the realm of the possible. Uh, and so we've, we've, we've really adjusted that thought of what, what are requirements. Uh, and it started from a different approach of, how do we just accelerate learning? Because if, if we know very quickly what's possible, we know very quickly how to adopt those new technologies, to some degree, requirements have, are going to evolve with an enemy. So to think that we can establish requirements and, and lock those requirements in for the next five years, for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years, at the pace technology is going, we, we, we probably will continue to do in some instances, but we certainly want to take, uh, at least with some of our acquisition approaches, a slightly modified means of not driving those requirements, but instead accelerated learning. And how does that accelerated learning happen? Well, one, we've really looked at kind of three key areas. Uh, how do we help reduce technical risk? How do we help reduce regulatory risk? And how do we help reduce financial risk? And as we look across that spectrum, we see that as really a learning campaign that allows us to rapidly evolve those small R requirements in a way that is relevant to industry. And so with the technical side, uh, working in the Air Force Research Laboratory, we've got many of our Agility Prime companies uh, working in our wind tunnels, doing things with think, cyber resiliency, uh, ground vibration testing, uh, materials and manufacturing uh, surety. So that technical risk reduction has helped us 
again, take some of these novel technologies and make sure that they meet what is an extraordinarily high standard for our airworthiness, which takes us kind of to the second point, this regulatory risk reduction. And when we think about that, you know, we in the Air Force have the ability to take aircraft. I've got a C-17 right in front of me here. You know, no concerns when we go fly that massive C-17 over a, you know, a crowd of, in a football stadium. It's because we have a, a very, very high standard for what we expect in engineering and manufacturing, in operations. And so when we look at reducing the regulatory challenges, when we see new aircraft uh, like electric vertical takeoff and landing, our airworthiness office spends a, a huge amount of time looking at all the different failure modes and really putting a, a stamp of approval that we've got federal government scientists and engineers who have seen that high level of rigor in these companies and that we believe well not we believe but we, we've been working closely with the FAA uh, to eventually be able to start sharing some of that data in a way that helps accelerate what could be the commercial use cases in addition to our military use cases. And, and once we get that regulatory piece uh, at a level of rigor that's necessary, then that takes us to the third and final area where we've really put a lot of emphasis is the financial risk reduction, right? It's uh, the Air Force uh, potentially being an early adopter of some of these technologies uh, and really showing as we look across the spectrum now, going back to the requirements discussion, a spectrum of different capabilities that this helps with things like disaster response, where, you know, as we've seen over the last year, we spend a huge amount of time and resources, things like uh, logistics movements, things like medical evacuation. Well, those are not just great opportunities for our Department of the Air Force, but those are also provide huge opportunities in a commercial sector where now we help ideally build this market and reduce very broadly then that financial risk as the Air Force becomes a very small part of what should be a flourishing commercial industry. So I have had the privilege to get to fly over 60 different aircraft uh, in the Department of the Air Force as a test pilot. And it's phenomenal the machines that our Air Force has fielded uh, and the opportunity to, to fly those machines uh, in places around the world. Uh, what as the Air Force, we have very much in our DNA a sense of looking to the new, looking to see what's next. And, and when we look at opportunities to go from phenomenal, exquisite aircraft like the F-16 that's sitting here in front of the C-17 at Oshkosh, uh, an amazing aircraft that I loved flying. Uh, as, as I look at that and I compare that to some of the opportunities in a new era of aerospace, where it's not just a few pilots flying F-16s, but we now have potentially democratized flight so that we have really potentially all of our airmen, maybe even our guardians, uh, certainly our soldiers and our Marines and, and, and likely our sailors having the opportunity to use the air domain in ways that we never have before. Uh, that's, that is extremely exciting. That radically changes the way we think about conducting operations uh, for our military, but certainly when you look at the potential public benefit that this would create in reducing uh, friction in transportation, reducing stress in people's lives, connecting humans through a, a radical new form of transportation that's quiet, that's low cost, that's simple, and in particular, that's safe. Uh, it's, it's hard to be an airman and not be really excited about that future potential and doing what we can to accelerate that exciting future. We launched Agility Prime just over two years ago. Since we did that, you know, when we first launched it, uh, really it was a hypothesis, you know, an experiment to see, is there any of these really exciting startups, are they interested in participating with the Department of the Air Force? Since then, we have over 30 companies who have applied to our Air Race to certification. We have over 300 companies who have won Small Business Innovation Research Awards, uh, these contracts, or Small Business Technology Transfer. Uh, among those, you know, over 150 research institutions and universities. So we feel like we have made some good strides in mobilizing and creating partnerships with the talent that's out there, uh, with the capital that's out there, and with the amazing technologists developing hardware and software. But really, we think that's just the beginning.
Uh, we have an open call still to, uh, today for our Small Business Innovation Research Program. Uh, if you go to AppWorks.com, you can learn about that open call as well as the future open calls that we have. Uh, we have, uh, you know, recently just several new eVTOL companies who are going to be doing their first flights this year. So we're seeing a level of ongoing maturity. Uh, obviously, we have some companies, that, you know, some of our first companies in uh, are well known and they're moving very rapidly. But it's also exciting to see some of these companies that are potentially fast followers. So uh, we think we're really just on the cusp of what's possible here, not just with Agility Prime, but, uh, but a model that allows us to create an entirely new approach to collaboration with other nascent sectors uh, where we can bring forward that maturity, again, for military utility, uh, for security, and for broadly the prosperity of our country.